So far, we've always applied simple data types. We defined attributes and domains of the numeric type and of the character type. And we also have other simple data types, like date and image, among others. In addition to attributes and domains, we can also define variables of simple data types. A variable is a portion of memory to which we assign a name and we use to store data temporarily. As we can see, each object has its own section of variables, meaning that the variables defined in an object are known only in that object. So when we want to temporarily store the data relative to a customer in a specific object, we have the choice of defining an individual variable to store the ID, another individual variable to store the name, and another one to store the address, and so on. Otherwise, Genexus also allows the storing of several data together in a single variable. To solve it that way, we have to define a special data type called compound data type, or structured data type, or SDT for short. We call it SDT customer, create, and find a structure for defining, similar to the structure of transactions. In it, we will add each member or data name that we want to save in relation to a customer and its type. We add a member under the name ID and see that the type is assumed by default from the ID domain, just like when we include the customer ID attribute in the customer transaction. We continue by adding a member called name for the customer name to be stored, and a member called address to store the customer's address and then we save. We can assign this definition we determined for a compound data type as the data type of a variable that we define in an object. However, we cannot use a structured data type to define an attribute because these only store simple data. For example, if we want to save a customer's data in the memory and in a specific object in order to use it later, we could define a variable ampersand customer of the SDT customer type, and we would load this variable with the customer's data. We can see this in Genexus. We may use variables in a number of objects. In this case, we'll be doing it in a procedure object. Let's create a procedure by pressing Control N. So we'll leave the default name, and then press Create. Now let's go to the variables section in the procedure to define a variable with the name one customer for a customer's data to be stored in memory. We press tab to define the data type of this variable. And we could press the arrow to choose the data type SDT customer. But it's much easier to go to the properties window and click on the data type property and then press the arrow to find the structured data types. We click on the plus sign and select SDT customer. Now we open the source section and select variable in the insert menu and choose the variable one customer. We type in a period and we can see that a window opens up where we can see the members we created in the compound data type SDT customer. Address, ID, and name. We select ID and press enter. Now we load the ID member of this SDT customer type variable with the customer's identifier. We write the assignment sign, which is the equal sign, and the number one. We continue loading the customer name. Then in the second line of code, we insert the one customer variable again. We type in a period and select name. We assign it the name John Smith. And lastly, we load the address. We insert the one customer variable, period, address, and assign to it 5th Avenue 1234. We've thus saved in memory, in the ampersand one customer variable, some specific data corresponding to one customer and we'll be able to work with this data later on in the procedure in any operation that might require such data. 
Many times, it's not necessary to save in memory data that is already stored in the database. In this case, the structure of the structured data type that we must create matches the structure of attributes in the transaction that we had defined. Let's see how Genexus helps out here with an easy solution. We create a new structured data type, new object, then choose structured data type, and call it SDT customer2. Now instead of starting to define the members of the SDT one by one, we go to the folder view navigator window to find the customer transaction, and drag the transaction over the structure of the SDT that we were defining and release the button. We can see that the members of SDT customer2 were created automatically with the same names of the attributes of the customer transaction. We save. Now let's get back to the procedure to define a variable with the name another customer. We press tab, and in the properties window, we select the data type SDT customer2. Let's go back to the source section and insert the variable we've just defined. We can type in the ampersand symbol, and we'll have an offer of all the variables we have defined in the object. We can see that many of them were not created by us, but by Genexus. We select another customer, and then type in a period. We can then see all the members of the structured data type SDT customer2. As we said, our purpose was to load this variable of the structured data type with data that is stored in the database. We will see how to go about this loading when we study data providers. And finally, in addition to what we saw about using a structured data type to store in temporary memory the data corresponding to one customer, we will now see that it's also very easy to modify the definition to save the data of several customers. So let's go back to the definition of the SDT customer where we'll see that this isCollection column offers a box in the first line, to the right of the SDT customer name. If we check this box, we'll be defining that the SDT will store a collection of elements from the structure defined, instead of storing just one element. Further ahead, we'll find out more about this when we study data providers.